So when we are doing the forecast, for validation purpose, it is always important to have some training sample and then some test sample, as I mentioned in my earlier videos, right? So how do we really make our training sample and test sample? And there are some rules of thumbs. And here I'm going to show you a couple of them. So the first one is that we go for 70-30 rule. So based on the data sample that we have, we can divide it into 70% and 30%. So 70% of our data will be training sample and 30% of the rest of the data will be our test sample, which we can see in the first line here. If you see here, black dots. So if we have 10 data points, we can take seven of them in our training sample. And based on that, we estimate a model and then we apply the same model to estimate the three out sample periods. And of course you are not going to have only 10 uh, training sample peers, it's just for a demonstration purpose. But normally, let's say if you have 100 data points, then you can have 70 on the training and 30 on the test. So some people say that another good approach could be 80-20 rule, particularly if you have a small sample sizes. You know, so then maybe it could be a good idea to go for 80% and 20%. So you put 80% of your data in the training sample and 20% rest of the data in your test sample, okay? And then if you have very large sample sizes, very large data sets, uh, for instance, 1,000 data points, 2,000, 5,000 data points, then maybe it is a good idea to actually divide your data set into three points. So then what you do is you can maybe take 70% of your data as your initial training data points then you take 20% of the data for first validation sample size, okay? So you estimate the model based on the first 70% of your data and then apply the data to forecast the next 20% of the data. And then again, based on that, you see if your model works fine. So let's say if you found Arima 311 model works fine with the training data set, then you apply that and other models also in the first validation point, the blue points, the blue data points here, so you apply there and you still see that, okay, Arima 311 works fine in this part of the data. Then maybe you use the same model to forecast the outsample data point, the, the rest 10% of the final data set, okay? And then you see if the model still works better there. So if you have like this kind of approach as if you divide your data set into three data points, then it provides a high level of validation of the forecast model. So in the next video, I'll be talking about dynamic and static forecast models.